Hello, everyone. In this lesson, um, I would like to talk about functions, all the functions, right? We are going to see and use in calculus. Uh, before we do that, I'd like to share a screen with you, which is, uh, this is a flashcard I prepared for the class. And uh, you can see, okay, um, there are four major concepts in calculus one. The first one is limit. On limit, from the outset, definition of limit, we use function, we use function. And in the succeeding theorems, definitions, you're going to see, you're going to continuously see the word function show up over and over again. So this is the function. You see, it's all about functions. It's all about functions, right? Squeeze theorem, all about functions, and uh, keep going. And uh, we're going to see all these useful theorems, and they are about functions. You see this word reoccurring over and over again. And the next important concept is continuity. Continuity. Continuity is based on limit. So you can see definition. In the definition, you see function show up again and again and again. All about functions. All about functions, right? All kinds of functions. And um the next important concept that we're going to we're going to see, you can see it's all about function. Right? The word function show up over and over again. The third concept is derivatives. In derivatives from the definition, you can see function show up again. And we have new functions. Derivative is a new function. And so from function, we create function. So functions show up one more time. And throughout, throughout these laws and limits, you can see lim the, the word function just show up constantly, constantly. Okay. So as I'm as we're going through these, it's all about functions, you know, uh, all these theorems, they're all about functions. Row theorem about functions and so on and so forth. And when we reach the last concept, which is integration. Okay, integral. Once again, the word function show up again. So you can see this entire course is about function. So now we're at the doorstep of calculus one. And what is function? What is function? So I'm going to open another page that we're going to review about function. And what are the functions we're going to see and use in this course? Here we go. What is function? So in this in this lesson, we're going to talk about the functions in calculus, in particular calculus one. Of course, you're going to see all of these functions in calculus two as well. So first of all, definition. A definition. The definition of function is, well, a function is a rule. Okay, so a function is a rule. Is a rule. Okay, so I'm going to make it uh, a capital letter. Okay, a function is a rule that assigns each input exactly one output. Uh, we have seen many of them. Um, and we will see many of them being reviewed in this recording. So in other words, right, uh, we have input and here's the rule. So this input will be supplied 
to the rule and the rule is applied to the input and produces an output. And this output is also sometimes called f of x or y in your past experience. Most likely you use y a lot, but it's really, um, you know, a rule is being applied with input and output. Okay, now the rule, f is the rule. When we put f of x here, okay, so this notation is used a lot. This notation is used a lot because first of all, it tells you this is the rule and this is the input, right? So when input is supplied, Applying the rule to the input, it produces an output. So this is an output. So this is this notation. This notation tells you, tell us, right? This notation tells us, first of all, what is the input? Okay, so I'm gonna put a little arrow. So we like to be familiar with this notation. So this notation, this one single notation, tell us x is the input, okay? It's in the parentheses and followed by, you know, following the function. And the whole of f of x, right? So I'm going to use a little notation here. Okay, so whole of it, the whole of it is output there. So the whole of it is output. So you can see when you see this notation, when you see this notation, you know input, output immediately, everything is right there. Everything is right there. Okay, so let's continue to see what other concepts are involved about function, right? And this definition, as we have specified, right, it is also related to the so-called vertical line test, right? So if that doesn't ring a bell, we're gonna, you're gonna see the following examples. Okay, so vertical line test, is the graphical way to evaluate with whether a given graph is a function. So we're gonna get to that, the vertical line test, right? So the, we have a couple of important concepts related to function that we're gonna use and we have used before. The first one is one-to-one -one function one-to-one -one function. So we'd like to introduce these concepts first, and then we're gonna see if they apply to our specific situations. What is a one-to-one -one function? Well, first of all, it has to be a function. So it's already a function, okay? But also this function, in addition to being a, a, and a function, is whenever, whenever, uh, let me make this just a little bit smaller window. Okay, so whenever the two input, okay, so x1 is not the same as x2. So these two are inputs. Whenever the two, in, any two inputs are not the same, their respective output, so f of x sub one, so now you know how to read the notation, is not the same as the other output. So how do we read this? So whenever the inputs are different, the output are different. That's one-to-one -one, that function definition, okay? Other concepts we have learned before, okay, I'm gonna bring even and odd ahead of these because um, I believe we have learned these concepts before, 
Okay, even function is defined as whenever the inputs are opposite, right? So we have one input, the opposite of this input is negative x, right? Negative x and x are opposite to each other. When we apply the out, the fun the rule of the function, okay, when we apply the rule of the function to these opposite input, guess what happens? If this happens, right? Opposite input produces the same output. That's when it is called a an even function. Okay, so this needs to be true for x in the domain of f. Okay, we're gonna we'll be addressing domain range. Okay, odd function. Odd function. What is what makes odd function right? Once again, is we have opposite input. Opposite input. One is x, the other one is negative x. It doesn't matter if x is positive, negative x will be negative. If x is negative, negative x is going to be positive, right? So they're always opposite. So when we apply the rule to the function, right? So we get an output for this one, and we also get output for the second one when the rule is applied. For odd function is that Whenever the output, the input are opposite, their output are opposite as well, opposite. So the output of one is the opposite of the other. That's what we meant by opposite output. Whenever the input are opposite, the output are opposite as well. So that makes odd function. Okay, so now let's look at increasing function and, uh, and decreasing function. These are the concepts we will be using in our course, in our course. Increasing function. Okay, increasing function says whenever, okay, whenever once again, one input one, is less than the other input, okay? Whenever this is true, then their respective outputs, okay, I'm just, at the respective output for the first input and the respective output for the second output, okay, what relationship will they be satisfying? Well, whenever x1 is less than x2, if it's an increasing function, the respective output will have the same relationship. Okay? And this is to be true, sometimes for domain, okay, sometimes it can be true for domain or a well an an interval. We call it I. We call it I. In a lot of cases in later structures you will find is often for an interval. So to make it more general, well a domain can be an interval, right? So for an interval. So that's how we usually define it. Now how about decreasing function? Increasing function is everything is the same about the increasing function, except, except, so I'm mean, just copy and paste, right? And this, the output is reversed. The output is reversed. Okay, so these are the basic concepts, right? So we're still talking pretty abstractly, but very soon it will become very, very, um, you know, uh, concrete. Now, 
how about the one-to-one -one function? One-to-one -one function definition should be for an interval, of course. Sometimes it can be for a domain, okay? So we have all of these completed definitions here. And of course, one other thing we're gonna mention is that, yes, we have a function. A function is a rule. And what are all the possible inputs? All the possible input, okay? All possible input makes domain. Okay, what are all possible input that qualify to be in the domain? Well, for each input, there's exactly one output, right? Vertical line test. So all of those qualified input makes domain. How about range? Range is all possible output, okay? So domain, range, the rule, input, output, these are the major things we're going to be talking about for any function or any rule or any rule. So let's see, uh, what are the functions we're going to encounter in calculus, right? The first one is the constant function, right? Uh, examples, it could be like, um, uh, let me give you a couple of examples. Example, such as in your previous experience, it might be y equals to 2 uh, or uh, y equals to negative 5, right? So no matter what the input, the output is always the same, which is a constant. In this case, no matter what the input, the output is always 2. In no matter what the input, the output is always negative five. So these are examples of a constant function, right? So for constant function, we just mentioned vertical line test, right? So what's vertical line test? The vertical line test basically says um, you draw a vertical line arbitrarily, arbitrarily, any vertical line. And there's an in for any input, right? So this vertical line drawn is going to cross the x axis, which are the input, where all the inputs lies, right? And uh, where is the input? Where is the input? So I'm going to mark it. Oh, uh, let's see. Yeah. Okay, let's put an input here. So this is the input, right? And what is the output? Input is this much, right? Approximately 1.5 in this particular example. And what's the output? The output is how high this is. The output is a vertical measurement. So this point, right? So this point, this point, marks something we called input comma output output right we call this ordered pair we are rather familiar with it in this particular case the input is uh the heart right input is a heart Okay, approximately equals to a number. Oops. Two hearts. All right. And uh, comma. Oops. I need to remove that. I'm sorry. Hold on. Uh, text. Okay. There you go. Comma. Output. What is the output? How high it is, right? In this case, it's approximately a point 1.8 input output. So that's how we express points on the function. The first number indicate input, the second number input indicate outputs. Okay, that's the first example. And do we use this function? Yes, we use this function in calculus. All right, second one. 
second one is should be rather familiar as well. The simplest case is f of x equals to x, which is that y equals to x line. Okay, you can draw that line easily, which is a um um let me just draw it here, right? This familiar line. It's the simplest case. It's the simplest case. Okay, it's uh y equals to x, right? Now, when we tweak it, right, you can see it has the vertical line test, right? And we haven't talked about domain. For example, the previous function was a domain, right? The domain is all real numbers. The range is just one number, one single number, which is the constant. Right, so here let, let me just go. I'm going. I'm going back. Domain for that function is all real numbers. And the range, the range is just a single number. The range is just a single number. How do we express that single number? We use a curly bracket which is a constant, okay? So let's, let's go back to see the second function, right? This function, y equals to x. y equals x may be too simple for us, right? No problem. We're gonna, we're gonna see many of its tweaks. We're gonna see some of its tweaks, right? You shifted left and right, right? So we get this tweak. So this is this is a sequence of function that we learned, and they're rather useful in calculus. For example, in very soon you're gonna learn you're gonna learn how to find tangent line to a curve. Tangent line is a straight line, right? So this is the simplest form, simplest form of function, which is the output is the same as the input, and it's many tweaks, mx plus b. Okay. And the word is is domain and range. Domain, all real numbers. It's all real numbers. And range, you guessed it. The range is all real numbers as well. Then you may say, how about that vertical line I learned before? Right? How about that vertical line we learned before? Um, for example, right? So I'm going to draw that vertical line. Say, uh, I'm going to get started. Okay, I'm going to use this picture. So this is the horizontal line. So now I'm going to draw a vertical line. How about this? Is this what is uh I'm gonna draw it. Okay, hold on. Uh it's no rush. Okay, so I'm gonna draw. You, you don't need to know how to use this software, but I'm using it. Okay. I'm just drawing a random vertical line. And there we go, a vertical line. We certainly learned that in algebra class, but is this a function? This vertical line is the equation. Its equation in this particular example is x equals to something. x equals to say, I, I pick 1.8, right? x equals 1.8. Is a vertical line all right? But according to the definition of function, it is not a function, okay? So it is, whoops. It is actually, it's not a function. Why is it not a function? It doesn't pass the vertical line test. Right, excuse me. If I draw arbitrarily vertical line, if I draw a, a 
I draw an arbitrary vertical line. There's no touch. That's okay. No touch is fine. But if I if I touched it, if I touched it, there are more than one output, right? So for function, we need to have for any input, we should have exactly one output. And here we have an infinite number of outputs. Therefore, this is not a function. This is not a function. Okay. Just to mention that, but still this function this function still has a place, right? Sometimes we use it as uh, you know, the the horizontal uh, the vertical asymptote, vertical asymptote. We have things like we have the kind of examples. Um okay, so let's move forward. Another category of functions x squared, right? If you look at this rule, if you look at this rule, right? I'm gonna bring it down so you can see this rule better. Y equals to x squared. Y equals x squared. These are its tweaks. But what is it's the simplest of form? The simplest of form, of course, is x squared. What kind of rule is that? For each input, right? The rule says you take the input, you multiply itself. That's x squared. So the picture is too familiar to us. And this is really the simplest form of a quadratic function. Does it pass the, horse, the, the vertical line test? Yes, it does. Okay, you draw arbitrarily vertical line, it's gonna cross the curve at exactly one point and uh, very familiar. Okay, very familiar. This is a function, these are the tweaks, right? You shift it left and right, up and down, flip over. So this is a quadratic function and it's many different forms. This function is so versatile, so used, okay? So much used in academic uh, especially mass courses, you're going to see it's many, many tweaks, okay? You're going to see it's many, many tweaks. Domain. What is this domain? Excuse me. All real numbers, of course. Negative infinity to positive infinity. Right? How about its range? Range is interesting, right? Range actually depends. Its range depends. For example, in this one, the domain and range, the range will be from, because it's in, it's in the simplest form, it's x squared, right? So but for this particular shape, the lowest point is zero. So the range would just be, x squared, okay, I've used a form that is maybe less familiar to you. x squared is greater than or equal to zero, which is telling, you know, the output of the function is greater than or equal to zero. The output is, the output for x is x squared. So I'm using this form to show you that. How about these other forms? Well, in these other forms, the domain and range could vary, could vary. Because in this case, if there's a lowest point, in this case, there's a highest point. So the range depends. In the case of um, lowest point, right, we might be familiar with this form. Okay, so all of these will be transformed into x minus h, squared plus k. If you're familiar with this, this case, we know that the lowest point is h comma k. Okay, so that's called the vertex. Okay, we don't want to go into great details, but if you need, we will we'll get that. Okay, so the, the lowest point or highest point, 
is determined, you know, it's, it's marked by something we call vertex. So K is, if K is the lowest point, it could be that the function f of x is greater than or equal to k, or if it opens down, it would be f of x less than or equals to k. So in this case, it depends. Okay, we have learned the if if you re recall this. That's how it's been done. K is the lowest point or highest, uh, the lowest point or highest, the highest height. Okay, you'll see this used. The third function, the third function I'm going to use is x raised to the power of three. Okay, Q, x cubed, x cubed, very, very useful function. And you'll see it used, you'll see it used. Domain. Right, domain, all real numbers. So negative infinity to positive infinity. How about range? Same. Okay, the range is also from negative infinity to positive infinity. This function has a significant place in calculus, okay? You will find out when we learn about Fermat theorem. Fermat theorem. Next, very important functions is um the absolute value function. Okay, this function is so so important. It's indispensable in calculus. Um. So first, there are forms of this function, right? Of course, we know that input is x, the output is absolute value of x, right? Then for absolute value, we know that if the, the absolute value function has a piecewise function format. Okay, so I'm gonna put it here. And there are two possible cases. Okay? If X itself is positive, or zero, or equal to zero, greater than or equal to zero, the absolute value of a positive or zero is the same as x, right? If x is 2, the absolute value of x is 2. If x absolute value of 0 is 0, we all know that. But if x is negative, okay, the absolute value of x is its opposite. It's opposite. We're going to be using this form very, very often, very, very often, okay? So understanding this function determines like, you know, quite a lot of points for you. I would say 20, 30 points for you by the time you take a midterm exam. All right, so this function is rather important. And you can see from this picture, right? For input equals to zero or positive, Right for input equals to zero for all these inputs, right? The output is the same. For these other inputs, which are negative numbers, of course, the absolute value of negative numbers is positive, right? But they are also the opposite of the negative numbers. All right. So if you have any questions. We have another video about absolute value in particular, okay? So let's move forward because I don't want to make this lesson too long to have lost your interest. Um, for specific topics, we'll have emphasis. We'll have emphasis. All right. The next function we're going to use and use a lot is the square root function. 
So this is the assembly function. Oh, we didn't we forget the domain and range for that? Oh no. The domains for absolute value function, of course, is from negative infinity to positive infinity. And the range, the range would be, I'm gonna use a less common form that you saw or used. The absolute value of any number is greater than or equal to zero. So I'm going to use this one. This is a preferred form in case you don't know. Okay. Um, the root function, square root function. Okay, this function is also very much used. Let's see, what's the domain? The domain is that the input must be greater than or equal to zero. And the range that the absolute value of x is greater than or equals to zero as well. So the domain and range are the same. Cubic root function, cubic root function, domain and range, domain and range, okay? Um, domain. Once again, it's all real numbers and the range is the same. The range is the same. And of course, you're gonna see there are tweaks, okay? Next one, this one is a very, very important function. Very, very important function. This function we call reciprocal fun a reciprocal function. So what it does is that you, if you look at the rule, if you look at the rule, you will see that ah, for any input, we just turn it upside down, right? Input is x, the output is one over x. Okay, the rule to tell us domain is all real number, uh, all real number but zero, okay? X cannot be zero. So this notation just says all real numbers but zero. Range, well, because denominator cannot be zero, so the range cannot be zero. There. When we take a closer look at this function, right? So if I, uh, this function is very, very useful. We use it, but not only we use this, we also use it many tweaks, okay? I'm gonna show the tweaks just a little bit later. Just let me show you. First of all, it has two asymptotes. We have a horizontal asymptote, Okay, horizontal asymptote. I'm going to mark it with a broken line. That's the horizontal asymptote. Horizontal asymptote. We also have a vertical asymptote. Okay, we also have a vertical asymptote. I'm gonna make it blue. So we, ha we have horizontal asymptote and the vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptote. So what do we observe in calculus class about this function before we see the many tweaks, right? So first of all, if you look at the horizontal asymptote, I'm gonna make the, uh, the view a bit larger, right? So I'm gonna have negative five, oh, five, here, something like that. Oh, maybe a, a bit more. Okay, so this is five. I can make it even wider. I can make it even wider. What we see here is that as the input 
as the input, right? So these are the input, input horizontally. So input is a protein getting larger and larger. The output, okay, let's look at the output. The output is getting shorter and shorter and shorter yet. It just keep getting lower and lower. So how do we describe this, this phenomena? This phenomena is described, we say, as X approaches positive infinity, one over X approaches zero. But it's approaching zero from above zero. So we use this little notation to indicate that. Okay. And in calculus class, we also, you will see, we're going to use this other notation. Okay, I'm going to see, we're going to use the other notation, which is the limit notation. Okay, you're going to come across right uh, uh, very soon. So as x approaching positive infinity, 1 over x approaches 0 from larger than 0. Okay, so 0, you have a little number, little symbol on the, on the, left, on the right shoulder that tells you it's from larger than 0. Okay, so that's one, that's in one direction. And the other direction, okay, on the other direction, so we just described this direction to the right. So let's look at the other direction. The other direction is as X is approaching negative infinity, Okay, input is getting smaller and smaller, negative 5, negative 10, negative 20,000, and so on and so forth. What happens? You can see the output is getting smaller and smaller, shorter and shorter, but beneath zero. Okay, so how do we describe that? This is how we describe it, okay? So as X is approaching negative infinity, okay, one over X is approaching zero, but from smaller than zero. You can see all of these vertical bars on this side, they're all negative. So they're approaching zero from smaller than zero from smaller than zero. Okay, so you're gonna see this. And also, okay, how about the calculus notation? Right, so for all of these, we'll say they're almost the same. Okay, I'm copy and paste, except this is x approaching negative infinity and one over x approaching zero from smaller size, from smaller size. So this way you can see these two different directions. Okay, so let me put them together. Okay, let me put them together. Right? Um, over here. So you can see the correspondence. Oops. I want you to see them in one picture. Okay, so this is the left side and this is the right side. You can see how naturally we introduce those notation if you're gonna use, if you're gonna use. Right, so on this side, x approaching negative infinity, so one over x approaching zero from smaller than zero. The other side as x approaching 
positive infinity, one over x approaching zero from larger than zero. And the calculus notation is right here. Now, there are two other directions, right? There are two other directions. So I'm going to show you, hold on, to make it complete, I'm going to put these other arrows over here. Oh, maybe this arrow is placed higher. It's the same, no difference. But it just, you can see that horizontally as the input approaches negative infinity or input approaches positive infinity, that's what we see. Then you say, how about this blue vertical, vertical line, right? Which is a vertical asymptote. Okay, so when it's see the other situation, so this time I'm going to copy this picture and show you another situation. All right. This other situation. Okay, so I'm going to make it a bit higher. Okay, so maybe negative five, positive five. You can see in the vertical direction, in the vertical direction, we have. I'm gonna I'm gonna move, introduce some. Uh, when we approaches, when input approaches zero from larger than zero, and what happened to the output? The output is getting higher, and higher, and higher yet. So how do we describe this phenomenon? How do we describe this phenomenon? This is how we describe this phenomenon. I'm gonna put a little table here to describe that. Okay, so in this, in this direction, okay, as X is approaching zero from larger than zero, and what happened to the output? The output is one over X is approaching positive infinity, positive infinity. So these two arrows as input approaches zero from larger than zero, the output is approaching positive infinity. In mathematical notation, in the calculus notation, you're gonna see limit as X approaching zero, from larger than zero, one over X is approaching positive infinity. And of course you will understand the other direction as the input approaching, as the input approaching zero from smaller than zero, the output is going to be approaching negative infinity, getting larger and larger yet. So in this other direction, right? So X is going to be approaching zero from smaller than zero and one over x approaches negative infinity. So in the limit notation, in the calculus limit no notation is that as x approaching zero from smaller than zero, Okay, let me make the funds just a little bit larger. So you must see this little notation there. I'm sorry, I moved one thing and uh, other changes. Let's see if I can. Yeah, that will make it a little bit better. Okay. So as x approaching zero from smaller than zero, one over x, 
is the limit is negative infinity. And this function is used so much, not only in this form, it is also showed up in its many tweaks, in many tweaks. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a couple. Um, what else? Clean this up. So let's see its many tweaks. They are similar. They're similar. It's just uh the tweaks, right? So let's look at the tweaks. What are the tweaks? Right? How do I tweak this? How do I tweak this? These are the variations. variations, right, of this function. It could be that um, it's x plus one, right? It could be x minus one. And of course, in that case, domain range would change. In the case of x minus one, then x cannot be equals to one, right? And x minus one will cannot be zero. In the case of x plus three, right, x plus three, and x cannot be negative three, and the range x one over x plus three cannot be zero. You can see these are the tweaks, and and of course that represents the shifting of the function one over x to the right to the left, and and there are some other situations. Okay, so I'm not going to go into more examples, more details, but you will see them. And next. Let's look at the other functions, right? So we have covered, excuse me. All right. Um, so we saw those other eight functions, which are often used. The next ones are the exponential functions and logarithm functions, okay? Uh, the rules are the input is x, the input is x, the input is x, and the outputs are the x is used as exponent. These families of functions that are very, very useful. However, by the time you enter calculus, you rarely use these two. Rarely. Well, you still see them sometimes, but you rarely. You, re you really just use the next one much more frequently, which is the e to the power x and ln x. They are both one-to-one -one functions and they're both increasing functions. And uh, they're, of course, they have many tweaks. They have many tweaks. I'm gonna go back to the 200%, right? So <clears throat> for these two functions, uh, domain and range, Okay, domain, domain range together. Actually, for e to the power x, I like to use domain range together. e to the power x is greater than zero, always positive for any real number x. So the domain is all real numbers, the range is positive, all positive numbers. <clears throat> And e to the power x and ln x are inverse functions to each other. So one's domain is the other's range. Okay, so the domain for ln x is x greater than zero and the range, the range is all real numbers, all real numbers. You can see from that picture. These two functions are going to be with you for as long as you take a calculus class. For a long, long time. For a long, long time. And they're going to show up in their many tweaked forms, many tweaked forms as well. <clears throat> okay, you will see them. Um, and the next set is trig function. Trig function. Okay. Um, sine function 
domain is all real numbers and the range is between negative one to positive one, okay? We can see from this curve domain is all real numbers and the range the range I'm going to give, give you a form that may or may not be familiar to you is between negative one to positive one. So the output is between positive negative one to positive one. So that's the domain and range for a sine. Domain and range for cosine. Domain and range for cosine. Cosine, the domain and range are all, well, pretty much the same. Cosine x, okay? The input, all real numbers, the output is between negative one and positive one. Tangent function, tangent. Tangent domain is not all real numbers, okay? Think about it. Tangent function, tangent, if you, those of you, tangent x equals to sine over a cosine, right? So denominator cannot be zero, cosine x. Cosine x cannot be zero. If cosine x cannot be zero, x cannot be odd number multiples of pi over two. Okay, so that's why we see all these vertical asymptotes. We see all these vertical asymptotes. Okay, take one for example. Take one for example. We'll have a similar situation. We'll have a similar situation for uh, tangent, right? In the following sense. In the following sense. If you look at if x approaching say if x is approaching I'm gonna use I'm gonna consistently using red because I used red for input earlier right so I'm gonna use red again arrow red right if we, the input approach is pi over two this vertical asymptote is x equals to pi over two so when x is approaching pi over two from smaller than pi over two and the output the output is getting larger and larger yet so how do we describe that right we would describe that as x is approaching pi over two, okay, from smaller than pi over two, from smaller than pi over two, from smaller than pi over two, and tangent, tangent x approaches positive infinity. And the calculus notation, the calculus notation is limit as x approaching pi over two from smaller than pi over two and tangent x. Uh, wait, I want you to see that a little bit. Let look to 50%. Maybe you see better. Okay, you see this? X approaching pi over two, there's a little negative sign on the shoulder, okay, tangent X, and that's gonna be approaching positive infinity. So this is the calculus notation you're about to use. Okay, so that description, let me correct it. Okay, as X is approaching pi over two, wait. Okay, let me change it to the, change the color red okay so this this calculus notation to describe as x approaching pi over two from smaller than pi over two tangent x approaches positive infinity all right 
Okay. Keep going. Cotangent. We don't use cotangent a whole lot, so I'm not going to take too much time. Even though we do see cotangent, but we just not use it a whole lot. Uh, let's look at the arc sine, arc cosine. The arc sine, arc cosine function. Okay, the arc sine, arc cosine function, of course, they have their domain and range, and these are definite, definitively one to one functions. So here is a curve, okay, and uh, arc cosine which is right here. I make it smaller so you can see arc cosine as well. Domain and range. Okay, they're different. Arc, arc sine and arc cosine, their domain are the same, but their range are not. Okay, so notice that. Domain and range. Domain are the same, but range are not. Okay, one is from negative pi over two to pi over two inclusive, and the other one is the range is from zero to pi inclusive. Now, let's look at arc tangent. Arc tangent is u is a function that's used a lot. Okay, we get to use it, and you probably saw one of these pictures when I was showing you the flashcards of calculus, okay? And this function is interesting. Arc tangent is a very interesting function. It's a very, very good example to use in many cases. So now let's look at the, the limit step of, of, you know, the limit situation. You can see arc tangent has a, has two horizontal, uh, asymptotes has two horizontal asymptotes naturally comes with it on um, this other and the domain is all real numbers and the range is between negative pi over two to pi over two exclusive exclusive and now if you look at the situation here on this side okay what do we see here is as x is approaching, as x is approaching infinity, right? The input is approaching infinity. The so curve is approaching. The so curve, okay. The so curve is approaching pi over two. Okay, so this is getting higher and the higher yet. Getting closer, I'm sorry. Hold on, let me redo this, okay? The curve, as the, as the input approaches positive infinity, the height of the curve is getting higher and higher yet. And it's getting closer and closer to pi over two because this horizontal asymptote is y equals to pi over two, okay? So let me type it. This horizontal asymptote is y equals to pi over two. How do we describe this situation? How do we describe this situation? We describe this situation as, we describe this situation as, as x is approaching, oops, not a, as x is approaching positive infinity, arc tan, oops, a r c, sorry, a r c, arc tan, arc tangent x, huh, arc tangent x, approaches pi over two. Pi over two. And it, of course, it is actually smaller than pi over two. So if you like, you can do that. Okay. 
So that's how you you show that part of work. On the other direction, on the other direction, of course, you get this, right? X approaching negative infinity, arc tangent approaches negative pi over two, but a larger than pi over two. So if you if you see that whole picture, if you can see that whole picture, right? So that's the arc tangent situation. And if I want to make it just a little bit more illustrative, as we did earlier, right? So this is the case when we we approach uh when x is approaching uh, uh wait red, okay? I want red. There we go. Uh, give me the red, will you? Yeah, as x approaching negative infinity, approaching positive infinity, you can see that the limit are different. Now, calculus notation, calculus notation. In calculus, how do we express this? This is how we express it. Okay, so by this time, you've seen a lot of calculus notation. I hope this will help. Okay, so as x approaching positive infinity, right, an arc tangent is the limit is pi over 2. You can just write pi over 2. Okay, and in this other situation, right, I'm just going to copy and paste and make necessary changes as x approaching negative infinity, arc tangent is approaching negative pi over 2. So these are the two situations connecting us from trigonometry to, uh, what do you call it, to calculus. Calculus. So what do we use? And we use, you know, in what kind of capacity we use them. Next, is that all the function we use? Right? Um, you know, I, I make a table summarize, you know, uh in, you can put together, you can work with this table to 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 uh, just to you know, because we all have all the solutions in our study, uh, you know, previously. So I'm not, I'm not going to go over all over again. But you can, right? You can uh, work this table and fill it out, right? To test your knowledge about these functions and their pictures and so on and so forth. Function domain range, you know. Uh, next, then, then the question is. Are these all the functions that we're going to use? Of course not. Of course not. There are more. There are more. Because think about all those tweaks we could have, right? We talk about some tweaks. Think about that we arbitrarily choose any function and we add them, subtract them, multiply them, dividing them, even composite them. And you're gonna see all of these functions. And of course, some of these functions you already saw in your previous experience in trick class, right? So you can see we can produce even more functions on functions. So the number of functions we will encounter is a lot. And that's, of course, it's not limited to them. And besides, all of these functions can be created. Oops. Right? Besides, all of these functions can be created by adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, and compositing. We have another kind of function. We call it a piecewise function. Piecewise function. What is a piecewise function? Piecewise function is basically saying, take the first example. Take the first example. We have three intervals, 
x less than or equals to zero, which is here, between zero and one, and x is greater than or equals to one. We have three intervals which partition the entire number line into three pieces. On each interval, the rule, the rule are rules. Each one has its own rule on its specific interval. For example, on the interval x less than or equal to zero, including zero, right? Including zero, we use the rule of e to the power x. The second one, we use this other rule between zero and one, not including zero and one. So it's exclusive. The third interval, we use another rule, ln x plus one. So we have three intervals, three different rules. So this kind of function is called piecewise functions. Piecewise functions, okay? And there are more piecewise functions and you're gonna see piecewise functions very soon. You're going to see piecewise functions very soon. Okay. So that's the introduction to function and that is a review for calculus one. Thank you for watching.